guests that will help you organize your life and keep you accountable for it. She has over 500 videos of motivational and enlightening messages across her social media platforms. She has over two decades of experience within the field of personal development and social work and psychology. She is certified as a global motivational speaker and a coach under the mentorship of Mr. Les Brown. She is also a certified small business entrepreneur, certified professional organizer, and a professional accountability coach. Andrea, the Global Voice Mason. Thank you so much for taking the time and coming on the podcast and talking with me. How are you? I'm doing well, Jonah. Thank you so much for having me. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. It's an honor to be here. Oh, it's an honor to be talking to you. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how that long resume works? (laughs) Absolutely. That resume didn't do it all on its own. It went through many trials and tribulations, sores, sorrows that ended up in smiles. Absolutely. So yes, so my name is Andrea, the Global Voice Mason under the mentorship of Mr. Les Brown, who told me in October 2020, Andrea, dream big. Well, if it weren't for those words, my dream big vision became a reality. See, I was born in the war-torn drug zone era at its prime during the cartel. My parents put me up for adoption at 11 months old, where I was only weighing 11 pounds. But I was welcomed with open arms to the Americas of a healthy, wealthy, unconditional, loving family. But unbeknownst to me, it was a treasure for them, but a tragedy for me. This resume has started from a very young age. See, kids can be cruel, right? And when you don't understand what is going on with your life, you only go by the stories that are told to you. And as you are younger, your stories are told to you. But as you grow up one day, you choose the way to write your own story. So during the time of my upbringing, I was in a safe, unconditional, loving family. But on the outside, I was a victim of bullying and abuse. I didn't fit in. I didn't look like everyone. I used to joke that I lived in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood and everybody knew each other's name and got along and knew their stories and talents. But for me, it was a struggle. I had to work 10 times harder just to get by. And unfortunately, it ended up eating my lunch in the bathroom stalls just to be a safe haven space to break away from the toxicity. Shoved into lockers, thrown into trash cans, and abuse of all kind. So as his resume progressed, I decided I was going to take the pen in my own hand and enter into the industries of professional and personal development of social work and psychology. Social work where I can understand the morals, ethics, and values, and lifestyles, morals, beliefs, and creeds of everyone all over the world. Psychology, so I can understand the science behind why people do what they do and why they don't. And that propelled me forward to service of others from infantry to geriatric. But what I did was different. Being a victim and an an abused individual as I was younger, it was difficult for people to understand. It was difficult for people to see where I came from and what I did. People would give me the problem. They would share the problem. And they would scientifically explain what the problem was. But not one, not one, shared with me the solution to the problem. And that's when I changed my ways and decided that I was going to change the face of professional and personal development and understand the individual as a human being, as opposed to a stigmatism, label, or diagnosis. That propelled me to then propel into the medical holistic wellness worlds where I understood the repercussions the lack of forgiveness, the lack of forgetting, and the lack of 
self-assurance and awareness where it took a toll on individuals. And when I learned about the medical realm, holistic realm, it was all about the mindset, the mind over matter, the perspective that you look upon with your lens. And once you alter your perspective, according to you, your whole world will change. And when that pinnacle aha moment came, the universe had a different plan for me. The world shut down. What was I going to do? 2020, I've dedicated my whole life to this. So I took the pen to my own hand, and I took my losses, turned them into lessons. I took my sorrows into successes. And I learned to follow my heart and not the herd, nor the hurt. For now, as I sit before you, success and happiness is the lifestyle I lead while living my dreams. That is amazing that uh, you have come from such adversity to be able to be so successful in what you're doing. And it's and I've heard your message, and I've and I've watched your videos, and just the, the passion in your job that you have is amazing. So, when exactly did it hit you that you wanted to take this path of uh, being this motivational voice? It actually wasn't in the cards for a long time, really, until twenty twenty. You know, I was always behind the scenes, behind the curtain, doing the, you know, nitty gritty, meticulous work on paper or, you know, one to ones. If you ask any of my friends and family, they're like, Andrea is the FBI of the family, of her friends and her network. Very reserved, very conservative. But then that led to loneliness. That led to disconnect. And I said, well, now that everything's shut down, I didn't realize that I was an extrovert. As human beings, we need the support and the engagement and that interaction with one another. And as an introvert, it was very dark and lonely for me. It wasn't easy. Who was I going to share my emotions with? Who was I going to share my concerns with? Who would listen to me? But when I decided that I don't want even my worst enemy to go through the pain, sorrow, suffering, and silence for so long, I had to do something. When you're a victim of abuse, physical, sexual, emotional, spiritual, and mental, and emotional, it it, it takes a toll on you. At the time that I was going through it, it was uncomfortable to talk to your parents. It was uncomfortable to talk to your friends. Who wants to hear you when you're the go-to person all the time, right? And then when you're a bullied for being different, who's going to listen to you? You've already subconsciously been labeled as garbage when thrown into trash cans and insignificant when shoved into lockers. But I remember that day in October. See, our family had made the conscious decision in 2015 we were going to live by the law of attraction, the secret for those of you who are familiar. And we unplugged. We unplugged from TV. We unplugged from radio. And we just decided and made an investment by our own choices, what we were going to watch, what we were going to listen to, and what we were going to invest in our mind, body, soul, and pretty much with our finances. And I'll never forget. I just lost a job of I loved as a wellness motivational nutritionist coach. 
I went in early. I left late. I loved that job, ran it like it was my own. Now they're telling us you can't even see people. You can't go anywhere. I felt insubordinate. I felt helpless. And that is when I heard on the reel, are you going through it or are you growing through it? By the legendary, my proud, I'm happy to be mentored under him, the legendary Mr. Les Brown, the guru of motivational speaking. And I really resonated with me. I'm not going to go through this. I'm going and ready to grow through it. Because a lot of people say, well, vulnerable is a sign of weakness. Well, my mentor told me, no, it's a sign of awareness and strength. Because once you understand yourself completely, the rest is is pretty much smooth sailing. Because whatever you emulate upon people is what you'll receive. But we get so trapped in the past that unless we face our past, our past will continue to chase us. That's why they say we are a gift. We are present in the presence of others. Yes, I could have given up. I could have given up when I was 11 11 months old, crossing the waters to a brand new country. I could have given up when I didn't excel in school. I could have given up when I was bullied and abused. But now, as Steve Jobs says, connect the dots backward and you'll see why you are where you are. I had to go through that. I had to experience loss to love. I had to experience sacrifice, succeed. And I had to yield to the pain to become passionate. And if you are able to do that, take three seconds, look in the mirror, place your hand over your heart in silence. And truth be told, Tears will be shed. Breaths will be taken. And clarity will be the result. What part do you love the most about what you do? The part I love the most is the human connection, the human interaction. Learning that their stories are so similar the underlying thread we must hold true, especially now, is we all, number one, have the same creator, number two, are human, and number three, none of us, not one of us, is perfect. Whoever you put in front of me that I connect with, I have built up the strength, the power, the passion, and the empathy to see myself in them. And if you're able to do that, then you've answered the call to your mission and message in life. So I'm sure you, you, when you help clients, you may, you help them make incremental goals during their days, right? To kind of help them you know, reach the enjoyment they're trying to have in the day. Uh, Yes. Do you make yourself incremental goals uh, just to get through your day? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's not easy what I do, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Because what I've done for most of my life was help others achieve their dream. You work for an employer, you work for a corporate, you work for a business. You're helping that individual achieve their dream. What I do is I don't dictate, I don't lecture, 
I listen and I learn and I walk right beside you. My incremental goals is number one, have gratitude attitude always. When you wake up and before you go to sleep. I've been fortunate enough to speak on every continent of this world. And believe you me, my perspectives have been altered tremendously. Because the media and society and industries show you a small perspective. I get to meet the individuals in the moment. So I start with the gratitude attitude number one. Number two, I was taught by a a friend of mine, son of a warrior, Dr. Nelson Belteshar, from his father. And his father taught him, make sure every day that you wake up, you are the answer to someone's prayer. And finally, always act with integrity, passion, and love. Because what makes us different makes us authentic. What makes us authentic makes us powerful. And once we are able to be powerful within, then we have so much more to pour onto others and share with others. That's amazing. So how do you keep yourself motivated to keep hitting the goals during your day and not bring yourself down? It's not easy. I'm not going to sit in here and tell you that I don't. Music. Music is the universal language that I wholeheartedly depend upon. I mean, I can listen to anything from Beethoven to DMX to Eminem to Blues Traveler to the Irish tenors, whatever it may be. You, music is the universal language, even if it's instrumental. Because we're all energy beings. We all have frequencies. And it's how you adjust and change your channel to the best frequency that you have. Every morning, I put on steel drums with ocean waves or even just a little ASMR music by the beach. Now, what I'm doing during that is dishes, cleaning the home, getting ready for the day, prepping my own meal of cereal. I don't cook. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. But that escape, listening to the crashing of the waves, the amazing sound of a spoon stirring ice in the water, the steam pot pouring coffee into a cup, That's the tone. And when I have a rough day, be fearful. I'm a Taurus. My birthday's coming up. (laughs) I will throw on Eminem or a rap and just let it out. Whether it's through just going through the music and feeling it, working out, or if I don't have the capable of doing that, just allowing myself, which I've strongly been mastering is feeling the emotions in the moment. Because if I suppress them, it's not right. It's not fair. And it's not who I am to hurt an innocent bystander who I'm talking to and take it out on them. Okay, so... We must... When you're just going about your day and, I don't know, say you're sitting in traffic, what's your go-to okay. song that you're going to go, I got to listen to that? Oh, wow. My go-to song. Ooh, that's a good question. Well, it's a, a toss-up between two. Forever, which is the rugged street kind, which is Drake, Eminem, Little John, and Kanye. Or the other side is Shakira and, oh my gosh, I just lost his, oh my gosh, from Fuji's. 
Oh my gosh, I forget, just his name just escaped my head. But that song, Hips Don't Lie. Hips I got don't lie. Why clef? Why clef Jean? Why clef Jean? Pardon me if you're seeing this on playback. I got it. But you. yeah, because it's just something that gets you going. If you're in traffic, you can't control it. And road rage is going to exacerbate it. And if you go with the emotion of anger, you don't want to take it out on anyone. You just go through the music and just you resonate with the lyrics or even the beats. Some people don't even listen to the lyrics, which may be a good thing or bad thing, and just go with the rhythm. You know, and it's all about shifting your frequency, changing your channel. Yeah, I, uh, I'm the kind of person that likes to listen to kind of just uh, just the music kind of right. block out the, all the words and all the, I don't care for all yeah. that. Yeah. So what are some of the big goals that you have now and what you're doing to hit them? So right now, my biggest goal is to boost my following on YouTube. Like you have mentioned, I have 500 plus videos, but I want to, I want to expand to the audiences that really benefit from it. You know, it's all about AI and SEO and hashtags. And I just want everybody to see what's available out there because I connect with everyone. I remember that it's someone's father, uncle, brother, sister, mother, aunt, I've been on different chapters of life where I really, truly am transparent. How many people are speaking positively about the victor after falling victim? The accessor who has been, pardon me, the achiever after abuse. Nobody's talking about that. Nobody's talking about what it's like to go through that. What are you thinking? The unspoken words because of censorship, because of taboo, because of just fear of judgment. We are judged every single day. And that's the number one problem. As I said before, you show me perfection, then you have the right to judge. But yeah, none yeah. of us are perfect. No, nobody is. A clear example. I can say five words and everybody can have a picture. Police officer. Okay. Nurse. Grocery worker. Department of Sanitation worker. Entrepreneur. What five images come to your mind? Now I say, erase them. Think again. Change your channel. Because you'll have an individual who's gotten pulled over by the cops for unwrongful justice. Or you could add someone who's had a family member live, life, saved by a police officer. You could have a nurse who didn't care when you hit that that but in for service because they were run down and you were in pain. Or you could have that nurse who handed you your child. You could have a department of sanitation worker come to you and tell you off. Or you can have a department of sanitation worker who smiled at you when nobody else did. And you can have an entrepreneur who changed their life to break from the nine to five to work 200 hours a week to live his or her dream. It's all about perspective. It's all about the reprogramming or deprogram of your upbringing. Define your terms by your beliefs, no one else's. You're right, and everybody has their individual way that they can think. Absolutely. You know, we've all got to break out of the bubble and see the world as it is, you know. Yeah. And it can be a great thing or it can be a bad thing. 
It's just all how you look through your glasses. Sometimes you have to wipe the smudges away to be able to see the blue skies. Absolutely. That's just how the world is today. And we all need to look like that. We all need to be able to have a conversation without worrying about, you know, who voted in the last election or, you know, this is my view, that is my view. Because we all used to get along just fine. But now we've let things tear us apart, and it's it's not good. It really ain't. And I think that's an amazing concept you brought up, Jonah, because think about it. You could have a room full of 100 people at a motivational seminar, an abuse seminar, a drug seminar, and then they all feel judged, isolated, ridiculed, shamed. You could take that same 100 people, drop them into Disney World, and they're all having a great time. You're right. You're 100% right on it. So back to you. Uh, When you're talking to clients, what type of message do you give them to help them get over that obstacle that they find themselves in? Or do you find it unique for each person? Each individual has a unique story. Each individual is at a different stage in their life. But the underlining message, again, is from my mentor. You don't have to be great to start. You just have to start to be great. And when you look at the perspective, see, the, one of the biggest things is as influences of the world our global leaders, our authoritative roles. They talk about their successes. They talk about their project. They talk about their wins. But what makes me different from them, I'm going to talk about the house. I'm going to talk about the mistakes, the failures, the sacrifices, the losses, the strains. Everybody wants to win. Everybody wants to be successful. But I'm here to share the story behind the scenes of how I got there. So when I work with an individual, again, I don't dictate nor lecture. I listen, I learn. What is it that you want? And what are you willing to do to take to get there? And no matter what, I will walk right beside you every step of the way. No judgment, no excuses, just results. How many times has anyone asked you, Jonah, what do you want? How are you today? Rather than a simple courtesy of random act of kindness kindness or etiquette to say hello when you make eye contact with someone. I go beyond that and I want to learn everything about you that you're willing to share to allow you to exceed your fullest potential. Because I believe, I believe in you more than you'll ever know. But it's not my life to lead. It's not my life to guide. It's my life to walk beside you. So how much of a learning is experience is it with each client? Because no one client is the same. Right. It is a learning experience because, again, I'm not tapping into the assignments, the agendas, the exercises, the therapeutic components. I just sit back and listen. And whatever they feel comfortable to share, where they want to go, it's up to them. Everybody has a different starting point. Been there, done that. I'm tired of this. I've had enough. Or most importantly and predominantly, what do I do now? I've lost two and a half years of my life in fear, 
isolation, abandonment. What do I do now? I have to relearn how to connect with people interpersonally. I have to be mindful of what I say even more. But I ask you, what do you want? And then let's get there. How much have you grown as a person just being able to talk to these clients and them coming to you and you seeing their problems and helping them uh, and motivating them to get through all of their adversities? You know, it's been an amazing journey of personal growth. Sometimes I'll look back at my videos. I don't even know what I say in them. It just press record, press play, and it goes. And what I learn is awareness, is enlightenment, is is compassion. What is it really like on the outside world? What are people really going through? And a lot of times during the conversations I have with individuals, tears are shed of joy. Tears are shed of awareness, that aha moment. And it just warms my heart, regardless of age, gender, background, creed, religion, status, that I feel that I am the person that I needed when my parents were working, the person I needed when people were just being part of the problem as opposed to the solution. It was the person I needed just to listen. Everybody has a story. It's just which chapter do they come to me at what point? Right. Because you probably catch clients in some of their most down moments of their lives, Mm -hmm. right? And uh, mm-hmm. you probably learn the most out of it because you're kind of digging in and learning about this person. So what is the most enlightening thing that you've learned over the past two decades? The power of listening and effective communication. I had an interaction with someone from Africa who requested the permission to call me mom because no one has given that person the time, the ear, or the love that they were looking for. And it was powerful in that some of the individuals haven't shared some of the conversations with their family or their professionals, or their co-workers. And here I am just respecting them and listening to them and showing all the different lenses that it can be viewed through and just being an accountable coach without judgment. That connection is extremely powerful extremely significant that here I am listening with love and affection where some of the, they've never shared. So what's the biggest thing you live by that you tell everyone else? I'm a woman of integrity. What you see is what you get. I show up. All in. If I'm unable to provide or give you 100%, then it's not the right time for me to provide. If someone asks me a question and I don't have the answer, I will provide the outsource for that individual. 
if someone requests my time and I'm unable to give them 100% of my attention, we'd have to reschedule. So what made you decide that you wanted to start making videos of uh, your motivational message and just reaching out in that way? Well, once I realized until further notice at the time that I wasn't going anywhere (laughs) and nobody was coming to me because of what was going on in the world, I decided I had to find a platform that would allow me to reach everyone, to find media handles that I can resonate with to find so shows such as this that are like-minded individuals wanting to enhance the quality of life of all. In order for me to be accessible to individuals, I have to be confident. I have to show up. I have to have self-awareness and self-assurance. Now, one of the things, as we know as individuals, Public speaking, whether it's virtual or in person, is one of the biggest fears of people. And as I mentioned earlier in the show, I'm, I was always behind the scenes. I was behind the desk, behind the curtain, or somewhere, somewhere along the way doing the paperwork. But when I realized I have a message and mission that's going to reach beyond borders and the waters, I have to be confident. I have to be the best version of myself in order to be a service to others. And through video, you get the affect, the emotion, transparency, the resilience, and the integrity. What better way to do what you love every single day? And a lot of people were just, who's going to listen to you? You're wasting your time. Who's going to watch your videos? Who's going to have impact upon your influence? The best way that I learned is through experience in anything I did in my life. Sure, you have the credentials. Sure, you have the the textbook. But I throw myself all in 100% to be in the trenches and have the experience so I can be prepared for whatever comes my way. And there's a quote, it's better to be prepared and not have an opportunity rather than have an opportunity and not be prepared. That is so true. I'd rather be prepared for it than not. That's 100%. So... A lot of your videos, you do them outside in nature. What part in your life does nature play in your happiness? Well, it plays a huge role in my happiness because, remember, in school or any institution, whether it be high school, college, in school or training or anything, it was toxic because I wasn't meeting the levels of my peers, right? I was having difficulty learning or understanding, comprehending or getting bullied or abused of some sort. So my outlets were, number one, playing the piano through hearing. My instructor taught me to hear the music first, then read the sheet music. And then secondly was soccer. And just being in nature, you see all the all the India uh idiosyncrasies of the differences, how different leaves and trees all harmonize together. And the weather is unpredictable. And for the most part, we're told we can't control it. But if you really sit with nature, you just see how beautiful it is and how connected we are. As they say in most traditions and, you know, ancestors that were all interconnected with the earth. And the reason why I do it outside is just 
You know, I did start out and everybody said you had to be prim and proper and sit behind a desk and make sure the lighting and the and the audio was correct. In the beginning, I was a little bit flat affect and stoic. But when I got outside my comfort zone, I said, you know what? This is not me. I'm not here to teach and dictate and lecture. That's, that's, that's what I didn't enjoy growing up. I like getting out there, connecting, and you're talking and a plane goes by. You're talking and the birds chirp or what have you. It's in the moment. And to be in nature with me again is just grounding yourself, as they say, the yogis say, and, you know, Buddhists and and all different religions. Once you connect yourself and ground yourself with earth, that's your true element. And that's what you resonate. I mean, if you think about it, also what I studied in psychology was the science of seasonal affective disorder. How many people go hibernate from, you know, what is it? Like probably September, October to March. They kind of close in and introvert. They sleep a lot. They kind of stay in hibernation mode. They're not really motivated. And then the spring from, I don't know, March to like September, you have either the polar opposite or you're constantly motivated and animated. Think of the next time it rains. Look at your behaviors and mannerisms. Think of the next time it's sunny out. Look at your behaviors and mannerisms. Once we realize that we're energy beings and connected with the world as a whole, then we start to chip away at the tactile stuff and the tasks and the titles. And we realize, you know what? The underlining thread in the end, we're all human. We're all part of nature. And we're all created differently. But what makes us different makes us unique. And what makes us unique makes us authentic. And once we start looking through the lens of that view vantage point, that's when you'll see and you'll connect yourself with people whose strengths are your areas of weakness and where their area's weakness is your strengths. Having over 500 videos out and having the ability to get your message heard, how does that make you feel? At first, it was nervous. I felt nervous. Oh, my goodness. What did I step into? I totally jumped all in. And now I'm a global voice. Am I going to be enough? Am I going to take on the responsibility of being successful? You know, I listened to a lot of motivational videos on my journey. And Mr. Brown says, you know, we always have these concerns, you know, you know, you have these questions. What if I, you know, that they want to be, you know, entrepreneurs or or thought leaders or whatever the industry they want to go in. And they say they have two fears. First fear, what if I fail and I can't meet, make my goal if I can't do it? Second fear, fear is fear of success. And for me, that was always the underlying thread. You know, how can I fail anymore? I mean, come on. (laughs) I got bullied. I got abused. I got abandoned. You know, I had a second chance of life. You name it. How could I, you know? And when I knew that this was my calling, I knew this is what I was supposed to do, rather what I have to do. That's when you realize this is who you are. And every morning, my question is, that: what am I going to do? Am I willing to do whatever it takes to make it happen? And still this day, the answer is yes. Sure, is there a fear of accountability, reliability, liability? Absolutely. Whatever, you can walk outside your door and you're walking, taking risks. 
Jim Carrey says, you know, he said his father was a great, you know, comedian. And then he, you know, I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit, but then he says, find out what you love and do it. Why do something you don't want to do every single day rather than do what you love? Obviously, I sabotage that part of me, Mr. Carey. But it's kind of the notion of if you're going to put 40, 60, 80 hours into doing something, why not do what you love and put the grind, heart, blood, sweat, and tears in that? That's a result of your hard work, your discipline, your mastery, and your gifts, skills, and talents that were given to you as soon as you were born. Matthew McConaughey says in in one of his um, alumni speeches at a college, he says, when you're looking for yourself, find out what you don't want, because then you'll find out who you truly are. And it's really important because I was always, you know, my parents were successful bankers and my family was a lot, you know, a long list of either bankers, lawyers or what have you. And it just wasn't for me. First of all, my numbers area is not my strongest suit. But at the same token, I had to find out what suits me best. You can ask yourself, what I actually challenge some of the audience listening, ask around, be bold enough, be brave enough to ask your circle, your network, your community, your family with a grain of salt and say, what do you think about me? What are my strengths? And if you're not ready to do that, by all means, I'm not saying everybody is. Start taking a note and start taking a toll, a poll, pardon me, and see what people come to you for. What are you the go-to person for? And once you find that, master it. Work on that and master it because that's who you are. How many people say, you know what? I'm tired of being the go-to person. Who's my go-to person? (laughs) You know, you always come in with me, the problems, the complaints. I give you solutions. You choose them. You choose not to do them. But who is my sounding board? And that was a challenge for me during this. Because my go-to person was my mother. And when I lost her in 2007... It wasn't easy. For two years thereafter, I went to a headstone every single day. A 45-minute drive one way every single day. Until a family member said, you know, Andrea, not sure why you're going here. She's in your heart. And that's when I realized My go-to person is still with me. And I couldn't forgive myself. And I didn't have this epiphany until 2016 when I ended up hospitalized on the ICU unit because of suppression of my emotions, my anger and frustration And lack of forgiveness. Another mother you took from me. My go-to person. Someone who knew everything inside and out about me. After two days that I and my family have created an amazing surprise milestone birthday for my parents. Two weeks apart. Only to realize that evening. She said, this was the cards that I was dealt. Just have to play them right. That following Monday, footsteps up to my bedroom. Had the late shift that day. Husband walks in. 
said, why are you home? <laughs> What's happening? Stood there. White as a ghost. She's gone. That anger and toxicity sat with me until 2016. Nine years later. Only to result in a hospitalization of the condition of myasthenia gravis. Complete shutdown, terminal disease of the autoimmune disease autoimmune system. Couldn't drink, couldn't eat, lost all four uses of my limbs, couldn't breathe on my own will. The healing power of forgiveness is so strong. If you don't take hold of it, it will consume you. And I learned and declared that day on the phone with my husband. Remember the secret, the medical expert, and the late, great Mr. Bob Proctor stating, disease cannot withstand a healthy mind. And today, I sit before you with a clean, clear bill of health released from the following self-induced, yes, self-induced conditions fibromyalgia, osteopenia, seven ulcers on my gallbladder had to be immediately removed, appendectomy, breathing upper respiratory breathing conditions, exercise-induced asthma, carpal tunnel syndrome, as well as our juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. So ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you Allow yourself to heal. Allow you to feel your emotions. And allow your voice to be heard. Someone is listening. Someone is watching. You're still here for a reason. How many seasons? Who knows? But the fact that you open your eyes and breathe and live another day, isn't it time for you to take the pen in your hand and live your dreams and make them become a reality? For you are here to help someone. And I do believe that in our subconscious mind, not even our subconscious mind, just in our consciousness, that if we could unlock some of the things that we can do and be more in tune with ourselves, that we can do that kind of thing. That we Absolutely. Can, we can open up a whole new world to ourselves if we just opened ourselves up to it. Yes. And it's so funny you mentioned that, Jonah, because my last job before the world shut down, this was, a, this was something that my, my boss said. And I was just like, really? Really? And he said, you only know, you don't know how happy and healthy you can be until you truly are. And I think a lot of us, based on fear, shame, doubt, And lack of assurance, we don't push the envelope. We don't take risks. I can't tell you how many times I've spoken with individuals who said, yeah, I knew I had the potential, but I have to be there for my family. I needed to do this, but I don't have the money. I know I can do this, but... I'm afraid to fail. Sometimes failing can be the best thing for you. And that, that's my life in a nutshell right there. I failed at everything I've done I mean, every single time. You can't be truly successful until you fail. Yep. Until you can learn from your failures to make them become successes. And Absolutely. it's the little things that you do on a daily basis that if you fail at them, 
sooner or later it's going to pile up and you're going to be stuck in that situation to where you're going to need the motivation to get out and you're going to be in that point. Right. And so it's up to you to be in that mindset and only you because you are the only person that can hold you back. Yes. You are the person that locks up that lion and doesn't let mm-hmm. them out. Be that lion. Be right. hungry. Always mm-hmm. want to protect your turf. Yes. I mean, that's you. you I'm talking Absolutely. about you personally. That is your turf, your mind, your soul. That is yours. Be that Absolutely. lion and protect yourself. You know, that that's just the way yeah. I see it. No, absolutely. I mean, I can't tell you how many times, you know, it's just so many things come to mind when you make that analogy with the lion, because it was just a few months ago. It says, watch a lion. The only time he roars is when he's hungry, but he walks on that pride land and everybody respects and knows where he stands. And (laughs) <laughs> when you said that you're the only person in the way, I can't tell you how many times I had to push myself out of the way. And the biggest obstacle for me, Jonah, when I was was on this journey is, you know, you, 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 you decide, right, that I'm going to start a business. I'm going to become an entrepreneur. There were so many times I'm just like, hey, what about, can I do this? And I'm like, Why am I asking? I'm my own boss. This is what I've created. This is what I've mastered. But we've been programmed that we need validation. We've been programmed. We need instant gratification. We've been programmed. We need instant, immediate satisfaction. Who's telling you it takes time? Who's telling you perseverance and passion don't happen without patience? It takes bravery, boldness to be vulnerable. Where is that being taught? If you believe in yourself, others will too. And nine times out of 10, you can point the finger every which way. He said, she said, D did, they did, I didn't get this or what have you but you're not seeing the materialistic items. You're not seeing the money. You're not seeing anything behind a hearse. All you're going away with is yourself. And that's the only competition you have every single day after waking up with an attitude gratitude is looking into that mirror and declaring you will be the best version of you than you were yesterday. And that's all that matters. Stole the words right out of my mouth. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry. You, you should all <laughs> you should always shoot to be better than your yesterday. Absolutely. Always try Absolutely. to be better than yourself from yesterday. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's get back to your videos for a second. What steps do you take in your videos to make sure you stay on the motivational path you're enlightening people on? Well, I know people are not going to like what I'm going to say, but I'm going to say it. I literally every single day when I'm ready to do a video, I just hit record. Some days I will say, okay, what's going on in the world? Do I really want to touch on that? I'll kind of thumb through some of the feeds, what the topics are, but I go with my heart. I go with my intuition. It will never steer you wrong. If you are constantly in role mode as rehearsal, I don't know about you, but me, I, I'm not. I'm not a fan of that. You're going on. on you're, you're following a script. And the best analogy is this: this world is a stage. Write your own script. So when I get into, if I'm ready to do a video, you'll see, it was one of the biggest awareness for me was I would always start doing my videos around 8.30, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And I'll never forget this. Somebody messaged me and said, "Uh, 
Andrea, <laughs> it's like 11. Are you okay? And I said, pardon me? And they were like, yeah, it's 11 o'clock. You didn't do your daily video. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. You know, because you don't realize the rippling effect and impact you have on people until people bring it to your awareness. And when that happened, it was like, again, going back to what I said before, validation. People are watching. People are listening. And for some time, I would just kind of be sporadic. But when I understood that my audience was attentive, I said, well, I'm not going to go on script anymore. Because it would be predictable, it would be cliche, it would be a niche, and that's not who I am. I speak from the heart. I speak from what comes into my mind, my headspace, that day, that moment, that morning, you know, whatever it may be. And sometimes if I do have a blank slate, I'll kind of process the morning and I'm like, okay, did I have an experience that was funny with my family or Yesterday, what happened with a conversation I had? And I kind of pull back from that. But this parallels and kind of ties into the previous question you asked. What possessed you to do 500 videos plus? So I don't have to be unaware. I can be prepared. If you say, let's talk about spoons, boom, I'm ready to talk about spoons. Versed in speech, speaking from my heart, from my experience, from my knowledge or lack thereof, it's authentic. And that is what is most important to me. Authenticity and integrity are my two most valuable assets, qualities, traits, and attributes that I Hold true. So are you more excited to get out and about and be able to do more live content? To be honest, I am I am excited, but at the same token, you know, everybody, I mean, I've been out in the public, uh, you know, in the public, but everybody's different. It's kind of like, do you shake? Do you hand? Do you high contact? What can you say? What you can't you say? So I don't know. You know, it, it's it's going to be interesting to see the dynamics and the interactions when when it does happen. Yeah, because you seem pretty busy as it is. Right. So. Right. And you know, I I rather virtual because I can reach more individuals. I mean, you know, to you know, I've been able to speak with orphans in Pakistan. I was able to mentor women who graduated for the first time in Africa. And so that's what, that's what drives me. That's the motivation that I could reach more people on a virtual platform. Although I'm, I welcome and getting back to in person, you know? Yeah. Cause there's nothing, there's nothing better than a face to face interaction. Right. Right. Absolutely. And that's why I kind of zoom while while I record. So that way I can have that intimate conversation with somebody and see your emotions and the feelings that you're having in the conversation. That's that's kind of the main point in this show is to hear your views and where you come from and your story and to enlighten us. Right. There's so many people out there that could share this same story that you have and to be able to open it up and have them listen would be awesome. Right. Absolutely. So where can people find you and get a hold of you to seek your services? Absolutely. So yes, I am on the social media handles of Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Andrea Mason, your personal accountability coach, LinkedIn. And I, as a token of appreciation to everyone watching This does not have an expiration date. So I am offering as a token of my appreciation, a 30 minute complimentary session with me one-on-one. Absolutely. And the best way to go about it is to go to YouTube, subscribe there, then email me 
at am.pressplay at Yahoo. And I'd be more than happy to schedule a session with you because I truly believe everyone is deserving and can exceed their fullest potential and, and, and should. Go on there, use the promo code at the BCE show, and she'll give you that 30 minute complimentary free motivational life coaching. And it was great when you gave it to me. I think I've learned a lot that time. Andrea, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and sharing your message. You're always welcome back. Thank you so much, Jonah. I truly appreciate it. I look forward to it. And it's just such, such an honor to be here with your audience and to see other like-minded individuals just wanting to enhance the quality of life for people worldwide. Absolutely. Thank and you so much. And you're a very enlightening person. And you can, I, I <laughs> foresee you. you seeing helping a lot of people. Thank you. It means a lot. Thank you so much. Well, that's all the time we have for today. You can find me on Facebook, The Blue Collar Enlightenment Show, and on Twitter, at The BCE Show. Remember to give me a follow and shoot me a message on what you think about the podcast. So until then, later. Later.